Welcome to Cadence Blocks 3.1. This new release is hitting WordPress dashboards around the world as we are publishing this video. Ben has a great blog post here on the site that is linked below if you want to take a look at that and read it. But I know a lot of people just want to watch a video or have someone talk them through it, and that's what I am here to do. So I'm here to show you some of the cool new features in Cadence Blocks 3.1. Let's get started. First, I want to show you how cool it is that we can now name Cadence Blocks within List View. So we're going to take a look at the design library really quick, and we're just going to load up a simple home page from the design library just so we have some content that we can work with. We see here in List View on the left side that all of our rows are laid out here with sections within them. For our advanced text, you now see the text within that particular advanced text block in the list view. So it makes it really easy to just jump right into the copy that you want to change and change that quickly. For things like row layouts and sections, we need some intelligence here. We need to make some decisions about how we're going to name these. So this first area here, let's go ahead and rename that our hero area. You type that in and you can see over here on the left on the list view, we see hero area labeled. And this next area has the contact form so we can enter that in. And that makes life a little bit easier when you're trying to dive into an area of a page when you're editing it. So this is our CTA area. Then when you load up this page later and it's time to go change something, you know exactly what to click on. It makes it very easy now to dive right in, make that edit, and get your work done very, very quickly. I also want to talk about other features with Cadence Blocks 3.1. And that's primarily going to be with the advanced form block it is now a new block that is available. We still have the standard form block. So if you have forms already developed with Cadence, that block is completely different. We just now have an advanced block. We see that over here. We've also seen some of our blocks are labeled differently. So you'll see form in parentheses advanced. It just makes it a little bit easier to load up what you're looking for. So we can click right on that. And we're just going to create a new form. We're going to create a basic contact form. And something you probably just saw on that earlier screen is we have some advanced colorization, dark mode-ish types of things. So we can describe our form here. Let's go ahead and just create this form and take a look at some of the features. First, it's very easy for you to add additional fields. So let's say we have our name, email, message, but there's a bunch of other options available to us. Let's just talk through a little bit of those. We have the standard text field, like the name here, an email field, text area, which is like this message area here, select, which is drop downs, radio buttons, which are great when you want someone to just select one thing, yes or no type of thing, a telephone field, checkbox, if someone can have multiple choice and they can choose a lot of different things, number field. We have advanced fields, which include file uploading, time, date, and accept, for example, accept our privacy policy. We also have hidden fields, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Layout, we can add paragraph text, advanced text box, sections, row layouts, and spacers and dividers right within the form. So if you have a long, complex form, these layout items can make things a little bit easier, and you can have them grouped with this form to make building out forms easier. Then we have also CAPTCHA and our submit button that are over here as well. We have Google CAPTCHA V2, Google CAPTCHA V3, Turnstile from Cloudflare, and HCAPTCHA. You'll have to add your API keys if you're using Google and also for Turnstile and HCAPTCHA as well. This is the new, much more efficient way to stop spam submissions rather than a honeypot. Let's go ahead and look at that that accept field here. So we could say accept our privacy policy and you can have opt me in. If you wanted to add links within that, that is easy to do. If you needed to link to the privacy policy, you could add that there. You can also add that within the text here as well. I also wanted to show you something really cool 
um, let's combine one of our advanced fields, the hidden form field, and I want to show you one of the settings for this hidden field. Go over to the advanced block and there is something under extra settings, populate with parameter. So oftentimes you'll see on the URL, if we see right up here, for example, we've got our WP admin post.php is the page. There's a question mark, then there's a post ID and action equals edit. Let's say, for example, we wanted to store this whatever action is, you can add populate with parameter to action. But usually what you'll see here with hidden fields and this parameter is UTM fields. Let's say you have a campaign running and it's something that's happening on social media and UTM fields are going to come to your site with those links. And you want to store where someone is coming from or which one of your campaigns, if you're using UTM codes, which one of your campaigns was successful when someone completes a form. That's your conversion and you want to be able to track that. Tracking the UTM codes, the UTM source, the medium, all of that stuff can be done with hidden fields and this populate with parameter, which is super useful for marketers. I want to talk a little bit about the form settings themselves. So I'm going over here to our list view and I'm going to select this form and I'm actually going to rename it to test form just to have some fun and we can see that it is renamed there and I want to look at some of the style elements here. Now, you've seen forms that are just absolutely gorgeous, I'm sure. So let's say we want our input color, the text color. Let's hit black there and we want set your input background. Let's say we want that to be sort of this light blue. Maybe we would like our form to change color when something is focused. Let's say we wanted the focus background to be a different color. Let's say we wanted a darker blue when somebody is focused on something like they are in that particular field. You can set that up. I wanted to talk about the labels themselves. So you see name above here, you see email above here, message, privacy policy. There are different ways of showing these. You can do an in-field label, which is just a lot of fun here. So then we've got our name value, we've got our email value, our message value, and then there's one other setting for label layout styles, which is float labels. So in this way, we don't have a label outside, but when we click within that, the label pops out. Click to the next one, the label pops out. And these have all been developed and designed accessibility in mind as well. So tons of fun things that we can do with our forms here. Let's say on your form, you want to have the form disappear. Where did that go? That's under general. You want to hide the form after submit. Oftentimes you'll see forms and then there's a success message, but the form is still there. And oftentimes that can confuse users. So if you want to hide the form as a visual representation that the form is no longer available because it's been submit, then you can hide the form after submit. So tons of settings, lots of fun things coming with this advanced form block. There's another feature in Cadence Blocks 3.1 that I wanted to show you called the progress bar. I'm just going to start a row layout here and we are going to go add a progress bar. And there you go. There are tons of settings with the progress bar and you can tie this to dynamic content if desired. So that is all available for you there. Uh, there are different ways that you can show this progress bar box. Let's take a look at different ways of showing progress. We have a circle and you can set up the thickness of that circle to be any way that you would like. We can also do this sort of half moon type of thing. And let's say we want our progress to only be like, 21%. I'm going to do math, all kinds of math for you. So you can set things up however you would like it to be. Lots of fun with this. You can change the duration and change the type of animation. So there's linear, ease in, ease out, ease in, out. So lots of settings there with the progress bar block and tons of different ways to show how that would work. For the full update of what you're getting with Cadence Blocks, head over to the blog. The link is down below. 
Ben has this full write-up of what is happening with Cadence Blocks. Another thing to note with this release of Cadence Blocks 3.1, Cadence Blocks Pro 2.0 is now out of beta. This was more of a housekeeping type of release, just bringing Cadence Blocks Pro into alignment with Cadence Blocks 3, which was a foundational rewrite. So not a lot of new pro elements to look at with Cadence Blocks Pro, but we do have so many things coming. You can either watch the live stream or take a look at Ben's post for more details. Thanks for watching and thanks for using Cadence.